All right, we are starting a new unit module today. We just finished our spot illustration, our full color spot illustration, which was free floating, can be used on products like t-shirts, stickers. Now we go to a, a small unit on type design. And type design is not just how to lay out type so that it's readable to work with images. It's also how the actual letter forms look, right? It's, typography is a full-time art job and content creation job. But we get to do both here. We get to design our own custom type. We can start by modifying existing type. We're going to learn how to do that. But we can also make it completely uh, from whole cloth. And then we're also going to work with layout, like understanding how to place it with imagery for a poster either printable or electronic format product made to be reproduced and to give some sort of information. So the only thing that we're required to turn in for this project are these components. We first need what's called a type blocking sketch, and this can be incredibly loose. With that, your type is going to be sketched alongside either your spot illustration or your logo. You know, the last two projects. You get to choose which, depending on kind of what branding or what kind of poster you want to make. So we did uh, a logo type of the campus mascot, Nico the Nighthawk. So you might use type that is Northeast Lakeview College, or you might use type that is Nico the Nighthawk, or you might use type chicken wings are delicious. You know, whatever you want to design to go with that logo is up to you. Or we just did the spot illustrations on Day of the Dead. <clears throat> I think it's Day of the Dead in Canada today. So happy Canadian Day of the Dead. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you can use any type you want with your spot illustration for Day of the Dead. You know, it doesn't have to be Day of the Dead. The blocking sketch is just an experiment with where you might put the text. And we call it a blocking sketch because you actually want to draw rectangles around the text. If they're shaped, if they're curved, if they're wavy, it's going to help you understand the layout. Here you see some different examples. This is with a spot illustration. This is with a logo. This is with a spot illustration with a more a complicated background. This is just with a textured background. This is with a flat background. This is with a textured background and and hand done type. This is modified type, modified type, and then modified type. So we're going to be learning all these different options. Once we have the blocking sketch, we're going to start experimenting with ways of designing the type. We're going to be doing that today and making black vector type solutions that However you get there, by the end of the day, they're just a, a separate vector file. They're not going to be tied to any typeface, right? They're just going to be outlines as vectors. Then we're going to play with color variations on those the same way we did color variations on our logo. And then we'll be putting them with our spot illustration on a full color poster, which requires a background and some sort of border, even if it's just a white border. Now, this is the job. This is a very common digital art job because one of the advantages of digital art is not only that you can make perfect duplicates, but that you can arrange components in these layers and edit them, right? And this is the kind of use for the job. These are two things I'm doing for the campus, whether it's a, a poster for a play, you know, sometimes they'll give you a lot of information that needs to go on there, or whether it's a a poster about an exhibit. There's a lot of information. It's up to you to figure out how to best go with the imagery. Right. So what we're going to do is first decide whether we want to use our logo. This is my finished off uh, NLC colored logo for Nico the Nighthawk, the new version, or whether we want to use our spot illustration. And we designed our spot illustration with no background, but your poster will have a background, right? And backgrounds don't need to be difficult. I just put this one together. 
because I have kind of unusual coloring, all these purples and pinks. And I wanted to make sure that I had a background that would kind of work with that. So I use some of the, the background resources that I collect. I call them letterpress backgrounds, and I layered a few of them up, actually just two of them, but then played with different layer styles, difference in this case, to turn that, that red into its inverse, and then to play with toning that down a little bit. So we're going to be putting a background behind, but the next thing I need to decide is what text might go with it. And if I'm doing it with this project, I am going to, let's see, I'll save it like this. I think I want this toned down. About there looks good. And you have to decide what your format is to begin with, right? So the physical format, we've talked a lot about digital formats, JPEGs versus PSDs versus vector files, EPSs, SVGs. This is the physical format. It's how it would actually print. This is a square physical format. This is made for, you know, online display. We want to make this into a print poster format. So I'm going to take its canvas size. And we mostly designed, actually, let me do it from what you guys had. This is from assignment five, if you want to use your spot illustration. We designed them on a background that was eight by 10, right? So I'm going to find my PSD, my working file type that has my full colored spot illustration. Oh, that was in progress. With so many digital variations, we have so many different options for finishing, right? So I can even take just my PNG and open it with Photoshop, the thing that you submitted, because this is a free floating cutout, right? Right now, if I look at image, image size, I can see it's 8 by 10 by 350. I want these posters to be 16 by 20 inches. So I'm going to go to canvas size, not image size. And I'm going to change the width to be 16 and the height to be 20. And remember, Photoshop is not a great layout tool, but one thing it can do well is grow from the center. So if I grow that space out from the center, I see what my largest format is for my spot illustration. If I need to crop this down, I can. If I need to make it a little bit narrower, I can. A little bit squarer, I can. But the first thing I'm going to do is to mock up the borders, right? So I know the physical format. And then I can sketch and figure out where type might go around it. So to do this, I'm going to use our old friend, the grid. But first I'm going to make a new blank layer. I'm going to fill that with middle gray. And then I'm going to move that behind my spot illustration. And I might take the opacity of that down a little bit. So it's a little strong. Now what I can do is I can hit command A to select all, or I can go to select all on this gray layer. And then I can hit command T to transform it, right? Now in order, remember, Photoshop's not a great layout tool, but it's good at working from the center. If I hold down uh, Option while I scale it, you can decide on the width of your border because it will shrink towards the middle. So I think my poster would probably look best about like that. I might crop it a little bit maybe a little bit closer. I want to have enough room for the text. And I can always move my spot illustration up or down, depending on where I think the text should be. Because I have NLC kind of built into my spot illustration, I'm thinking it should just say 
Day of the Dead underneath. Take this back to 100% and you see kind of what those border proportions look like. I can deselect. I can hold down shift so that while I move my spot illustration around, it's not going to jog to the left or the right at all. And I'm just looking for a comfortable placement. And you can use this assignment to, st to uh, still make edits to your spot illustration. I might tighten this up a little bit. Now, if you want to distort it, you can hold down Option and Shift, and then you can try different rectangular formats around it. But the first thing we need is the format. So I'm thinking maybe a little bit longer, a little bit like that. All right. Now I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to fill it with white, 100% white. And I'm going to put that behind my gray block. My poster isn't going to be gray, but this shows me where I'm going to have some sort of colored background. And then I can take the opacity on that gray background way down so I can start sketching where my type might be. And if I feel that that border is stronger than I want, which it is, I can use my crop tool and again, hold down option and shift and figure out exactly the border width I want. And that shows me not only my physical format that I sketch on, but also my printing format, right? So this is now 12 inches by 17 inches by 350. If I have a resample unchecked and I check its print capacity, right? This can print up to basically 15 by 20 inches. And minimum print size is 240. Because what we want is for your finished posters to be able to be printed at either 11 by 14 or 16 by 20 which is the largest we can print in this room, right? So if I do 240, I'm well above 16 by 20. So this is a good, a good range without having to resample anything, without having to recreate any pixels. Which means that from my, my vector of my spot illustration, I'm going to put it at, I'm going to just do six, 16 by 20. Actually, no, I'll do, I'll keep it at 350. I'll just cancel it. So what's nice about this, keeping the original digital format and resolution format of your spot illustration, I can go back to assignment five. I can open up the PSD of it, steal the vector layer, even though there are color holds and things added to it. And I can, as an element, because vectors can be infinitely scaled, right? Need to unlock it. Here we go. I can layer it on my image. I'm surprised that it's not the exact same size. It's a little bit bigger, but I can scale it up. Or maybe it is. Maybe I just need to move it up. Yep, it is the exact same size. So it's nice to, on your poster design, which is assignment six, have that vector as something you can use should you want it. Right. I'll put it in the background here for the time being. And sometimes I'll just do a, a sketch with just my line art, you know, a blocking sketch with just my line art so that the color doesn't distract me too much or make too many decisions for me. All right, once you have this, you can save it. It's already at full resolution. I'm going to save it as assignment six. And this is a type design poster. And it's not just a type design poster. It's a poster layout, which is, includes either your logo or your spot illustration. And where do I want to save that? I want to save it to my digital art folder. I'll put it into an assignment six 